Hi and welcome to Teach the Table. I'm Nathan and this is Camel Up. This is a betting game where you're going to be betting on the outcome of camel races. Not only the final outcome of who's going to be the biggest winner and the biggest loser of the full race, but also who's going to win each leg of the race. Each of the five camels are color coordinated to a die, which is going to come out randomly and tell you how many spaces that camel is going to get to move, one, two, or three spaces. All the dice are gonna be mixed up in this pyramid and it's shaken up and one comes out at a time and you just do the movement that it says. Once the last die has been removed from the pyramid, that's gonna be the end of that leg of the race. And so there's gonna be some scoring based on how you bet on who is gonna win that leg. As camels move around the board, if they have to land on a spot where there's other camels, they stack on top like so, and the camel on the very top is said to be ahead in the race. If a camel has to move and there's camels on top of it, it's gonna carry them with him. Resetting the board back to the start of the game, your goal is to have the most money at the end of the game. The ways you're gonna get money are by successfully deciding who's going to win or lose the race, or you can take these little leg betting tokens, which signify who's gonna win that leg of the race. You also get a small amount of money if you decide that you'd rather just take a pyramid tile here, which lets you roll one of the die out of the pyramid, or if you place your desert tile out on the board and a camel happens to land on it. So how does the game work? Starting with the player with the starting player token, each player is going to take one of four possible actions and is going to move around the table taking one action at a time until a leg is completely finished, meaning that the fifth die comes out of the pyramid. The four actions you can do are taking a pyramid tile, which means that one die is going to come out of the pyramid and one camel is going to move one, two or three spaces. Or you can place a bet on which camel you think is going to be the ultimate winner or loser. The winner would go here, the loser would go here face down. The third action you can do is betting on which camel is going to win this leg of the race. These have diminishing returns. So if you're the first one to take the tile, it's worth five points if you're correct and they are the winner. Next is three points, next is two points. There's no limit to how many of these you can have, however. So if no one's taking them and you're sure that orange is going to win, you could have all three of these tiles. The fourth possible action is placing your desert tile out on the board and you can choose which side of the tile you want to be face up. There's an oasis side or a mirage side and what that's going to do is influence movement if a camel happens to land on it. So not only do you get a money if a camel lands on it, but if you have an oasis side up, the camel is going to move one spot forward. If you have it mirage side up, the camel is going to move one spot backwards. When placing your desert tile, it has to go on an empty space on the track. It cannot be placed on space one, which is indicated on the board, and it can't be adjacent to another desert tile that's already there. So if the setup is like this, the closest I can put my desert tiles all the way out there. One more funky rule about desert tiles is if you have the oasis side up and the camel lands there, it's gonna move one space forward and end up on top of the camel in front. If you have the mirage there and the camel lands, it's gonna go backwards and it actually goes underneath the camel and that's signified on the tile but you just have to keep this in mind to look for that. Once the last die is removed from the pyramid and the camel moves accordingly then we're going to have some scoring for that leg so I'll show you how that works. First the starting player token goes to the player to the left of who took that last die out of the pyramid. Next we're going to score based on how well we bet on that leg as well as the money we get from taking the die out of the pyramid. In this case, orange and yellow are in first and second place at the end of this leg. So I'd get three money for orange being in first place. Since yellow is in second, I get one money for this tile. And because blue is not first or second, it's gonna be minus one for this tile. Then I also get one additional money for each of my pyramid tiles that I took, bringing me to a total of five money total for this round. Once all players have finished scoring that leg of the race, each player is gonna take their desert tiles back and we're gonna replace all the tiles that we took from the board in the same way that they were placed at the beginning of the game. The game will continue like so, having scoring at the end of each leg until one camel crosses the finish line. Then we're gonna score for the end of the race. To score the end of the race, you're gonna start with a winner and see who correctly guessed that green was going to win this race. So flip them over, keep them in order, and the first person who guessed correctly gets eight points. The next player who guessed correctly gets five points, three points, two points, etc. just like it says. Any incorrect guesses are gonna be negative one point for each one. So assign those points to the people who placed those cards. The losers are scored the same way. So blue was the actual loser in this race. So the first person who guessed correctly gets eight points. Next person gets five points, etc. Each other one is negative one. And that's the end of the game. Whoever has the most money is the winner. In the case of a tie, it's just a shared victory. There's no tiebreaker.
And that's how you play Camel Up. It's a quick little family game. It also plays up to eight people, which makes it stand out a little bit in this category. And thanks for watching Teach the Table. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. As always, don't forget to have fun. Thank you.